This video is sponsored by my good friends over at Rewind. Now, if you're using Jira Cloud and you've ever thought about backing up your Jira Cloud instance, then you know that it's not the most easiest thing to do. In fact, backing up Jira Cloud is probably one of the more unintuitive things to do in Jira. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be looking at some DIY options that you have when it comes to backing up Jira Cloud. I gotta warn you, these are slightly advanced and you're gonna to wanna to know how to do this correctly. I'm gonna show you a couple of references. And I'm also gonna compare those two DIY options with a purchase solution. Obviously the purchase solution is gonna be using Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud. And I'm just gonna show you how much easier it is. So make sure you stick around for the entire video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links in the description down below so you can find out all the different ways that you can support the channel. And most importantly, get your link so you can also start your trial for Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud. Data is crucial to every single business and you wanna make sure that you always have access to your data because any time as a business that you don't have access to your data, then that means lost revenue and lost profits. And so naturally we wanna back up our data. We wanna keep a backup, a something just in case and things ever go wrong. Maybe Jira goes down, which by the way, it has gone down a couple of times in the last couple of years, or maybe the data gets corrupted. But the common case that I usually see is maybe somebody accidentally deletes a configuration or delete an issue and you need to be able to bring that back. Now, if you've been using Jira Cloud for some time now, you know that this last scenario is not something that is easily done in Jira Cloud. You can't just magically bring things back. So that leaves you with only a couple of different options. You set up some sort of a DIY backup solution or you go and purchase a backup solution for you and your company. Now that we know that we definitely need to back things up, let's go take a look at the DIY options. I'm gonna be referencing this article over at rewind.com where it talks about the build versus buy Jira backups. So make sure you check out the link down below as this article goes into full detail into everything that you need to know about DIY or backup solutions. I'm just gonna to be touching some key points and giving you my two cents, my professional opinion, if you will, on which way you should go, the pros and the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly. So let's start off with building your own Jira backup. Now I do wanna preface this with saying, this is an advanced thing. This is not something that a novice or somebody that's just a straight Jira admin should be trying to figure out. This does require you to have a pretty good, strong IT background and it's not gonna be something that you can just like get done in a couple of minutes. You're gonna to have to invest some time, some calories, some expertise into setting this up. So I just wanna set the stage there to basically tell you that both of these build your own Jira backups are gonna require a good amount of effort on your end to get configured. So let's start off by looking at some Atlassian provided backup scripts. Now this is actually a repository. It's hosted in Bitbucket and you can go and clone it. There's instructions again in the article on how to do this. But essentially, you basically have these scripts that are going to be able to run. Now, the only bad thing about all this is that in order to get this all configured, one, you need to be pretty comfortable with scripting. So if you've never scripted before, you're going to have a bit of a challenge. Two, just because you have the scripts does not mean you have the infrastructure to support the backup strategy. So just being able to backup Jira is going to be great, but you need to run it manually every single time and you need to have this infrastructure because you got to put these backups somewhere. Right? They just can't magically exist somewhere, right? You need to have a strategic strategy for what do you do with these backups once you have them, right? So just getting the data out of Jira is part of the problem, but then you got to maintain it. So now you got to worry about how often are these backups run? You got to worry about where do we store them? Are we doing an offsite storage? Are we doing onsite storage? What happens if the building goes down? What happens if the network's unavailable, right? So you have a lot of different complexities beyond just the technical of how do I even get the script to work correctly, right? So that's one challenge. But the other challenge is, of course, you got to figure out what do you do with it and how do you get it all set up? So as you can see, not the best option. Clearly an option though, right? It's, it's going to be something that is available to you if you are so keen to want to go down that route. But definitely check out these scripts here. 
There's instructions on how to set it all up. There's a couple of alternative solutions, but check out the readme file. Usually that's a really good place to start. It gives you with some of the information that you're going to need in order to be able to set this up. And obviously, again, you're going to want to have a, a decent, if not some good experience with scripting and just in general, like be comfortable with doing this kind of effort. Now, the other option is to use Jira Cloud Automation. Now, when I initially read this, I thought, oh, yeah, automation rules. But this goes beyond just the automation rules. This is a little bit more complex and you have to do what I'm almost going to call like an external or super, super advanced automation rule. And so it does involve you having to go get some APIs and it does involve a, a decent amount of just steps. Right. So as you can see here, I'm going to click on this documentation. And there are the steps that you're going to be able to follow in order to do this. Now, this is a community article written by the Atlassian team. So you know that it's legit. It's a few years old from January of 2020, but it does give you basically the preparation, all the different steps of getting the token and then all the credentials and stuff and the bases and all that good stuff that you got to set up. And then you're going to see on how to set up those rules so that you can do either the Confluence or Jira backup. Now, you do also need to be familiar with cron jobs so that this can be done every so often, right? So they're a little bit more autonomous uh, with respect to that. You don't have to do these manually. And so there's a lot of information here, but again, very similar to that previous example, you got to have skills that go just beyond just Jira administration, right? You really do have to have a stronger set of IT skills. Now, if you're in the Jira cloud, one of the benefits of being in the cloud is that you don't have to carry that burden of having to be a generalist in IT. You can just narrow down and focus on Jira, but now when you're talking about backup strategies and you're talking specifically about the DIY options here, you have to be a lot more comfortable with those generic IT skills. And so clearly, if you don't have them, right, this becomes a pretty overwhelming task and maybe something that you really got to invest some time and effort to figure it out. But not all hope is lost, right? Those are some really good options if you want to go down the DIY route. Fortunately for you and everybody else here that's watching this video, Rewind has a very, very clever solution. You pay a little bit more upfront, right? You pay to be able to have this service, but the headaches and the worries that go away because it's being managed for you on your behalf are, I think, in my opinion, worth it. Because instead of having to worry about, oh my gosh, do I have to update the script? What if at last and changes something under the hood? What if the API needs to be renewed, right? There's a lot of like what if scenarios with this DIY solution that over time might not seem like an obvious cost. They're more like a, a shadow cost, if you will, but they're still there, right? So from a from an effort perspective, you still have to spend time and most people get paid money for their time, right? The exact cost might not be apparent to you immediately, but do keep in mind that you are still spending money for somebody's salary to go figure this out, get it configured and do the backups manually. So let me show you Rewind Solution. Let me show you how Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud works and how easy and intuitive it is for you to get going in your Jira. Let me give you a quick demo of how Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud works. Let's assume that my team one day was just working on this process area one epic here. And for whatever reason, they came over here to the actions and they carelessly clicked on delete. And then they completely ignored the fact that this says this is a permanently delete and it's going to be gone forever and ever and ever. So keep in mind that this was called KWD-19 and the title of it was process area one. Now, all I need to do is go into my rewind backup solution and I'm going to go and look for it. So let me show you how to do that now. All right, so within the Rewind Backups, I am going to be inside my vault and I have a Jira software subscription and you can see that my last backup was basically at midnight this morning. Because I know that I backed it up as of this morning and obviously the deletion just happened, I can simply look up KWD-19 and I'm going to do a quick search on it. And as you can see here, it finds the issue, process area number one. And you can see that this was last updated and last backed up on August 13th. So that's the last time that there was an update to that issue. And then that's the last time that Rewind did a backup. So I'm simply going to click Restore and I am now going to pick a date. Now, because I just deleted it and it hasn't been updated since August 13th, I can just grab this morning's backup and click on Restore. Now, this is basically going to tell me that this is going to go grab process area number one. And I'm do I want to do it? And I'm going to click yes. I, of course, want to do this. And then it's off to the races. Now, while that's happening, let me walk you a little bit through the UI, give you some 
pointers, some tips and tricks, and some really, really cool things that I like about this UI. So as you just witnessed, I'm able to restore a specific line item. And that I think is probably one of my favorite features of Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud, because rather than bringing back the entire instance, which by the way, I can do, and I'll show you that in a second, and most of the time, I'm probably going to be fixing little minor mistakes, things that shouldn't have been deleted, like a screen or an issue or a project that I want to bring back. And so this is really neat that I'm able to just restore just that one thing that I need without having to undo the whole work. Now, if you do want to restore for whatever reason, there is an advanced restore here where you can pick a date that's going to go back in time and restore your entire instance and bring everything back. Now the restoration does take a couple seconds. You do get an email notification when it's done and I just got the ping. So let's jump back into my Jira project and see if we can find that item that was restored. So I'm going to click on projects here, go back into my KWD project, and I'm going to click on issues as this is the easiest way to find it. You'll notice that my process area one is, is right here. And you'll notice that it was created just a minute ago because Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud just restored it. But most importantly, the one thing that I want you to keep a special eye out is you'll notice that it has a new key. Now, unfortunately, because of the way Jira works, you just can't bring back that exact same key. So it is going to be in chronological order. So I just want to give you that little tip so that you're not looking back for that original key. It is very, very important that you take note that the next sequential issue key is what's going to be given to the item that is restored. I wanted you to keep that in mind because the, you might go and look for it and it might just not find it, right? So it does work though. It does bring it back. As you can see, here's all the data that this particular issue had. It's in the same status. Everything looks the same, except the key is going to be slightly different. Now, one last thing that I do want to point out is that Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud is all automatic. So it's just going to automatically, as you can see here, my next scheduled backup is tonight at midnight. It's going to do it all by itself, or you can click the backup now button and run a backup now in that moment in time. And also keep in mind that Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud is SOC 2 compliant. So if you're looking for a smart and clever solution to handle all your backups in Jira Cloud, I can't recommend Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud enough. It's a really, really cool tool. Again, you're going to pay for it a little bit, but I definitely do think it's worth it. Not only because you can cherry pick what you want to bring back, you can restore the whole thing, you can do manual backups, you can do automated backups. It's SOC 2 compliant. It's going to save you a lot of headaches and it's all managed for you on your behalf. The UI is awesome. It's easy. It's intuitive. It just works. And let me give it to you this way, right? When an opportunity presents itself that you need a backup, I guarantee you, that the levels of stress that you and your team are going to be going through are going to be through the roof. Your thinking gets cloudy. It gets muggy. You don't have a hundred percent focus here because when there is a need for a backup, it means that something bad happened. And when something bad happens, that is not the time to basically wish that you had a good backup solution, right? And so, I recommend that if you're in Jira Cloud, obviously Jira backups, there's a couple of DIY, DIY options, a couple of manual options, but buying into a paid product is going to be the best route that you can go because if and when a disaster happens, you're going to want a solid solution for your restoration. And this right here is one of the better ones that I've seen. So make sure you check out the link down in the description down below. Give Rewind some love. Try a free 30 day trial. Make sure that you leave them a review as well. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need